Hi everyone, thank you for joining the Augusta Museum of History for another virtual brown bag. Today we're talking all about women in education with Dr. Cheryl Evans-Jones of Payne College. But before we get into that, you all know the drill. Let's talk about what's coming up at the Augusta Museum of History. First up, we have our annual behind the scenes event. Join our registrar, Miss Natalie Smith, as she takes you on a tour of behind the scenes, maybe talks to you a little bit about how to protect your treasures and shows you a little bit of what you might not get to see on a regular visit here. Those dates are September 11th, 18th and 25th. They repeat, so you only have to come to one. There's no pre-sign up, but do show up early um, on the day that you want to come because space is limited. We also have a new exhibit here at the Augusta Museum of History. Opening on September 30th is Augusta and the Civil Rights Movement. We're updating our Augusta Stories Gallery to tell more stories and we're super excited about it. So make sure starting September 30th that you come out to the museum um, to see this new exhibit. All right, y'all, it's time for Dr. Cheryl Evans-Jones. Before we get to her um, lecture, let me tell you a little bit about her. She's a native of Augusta and received her Bachelor of Arts degree in psychology from Fisk University in Nashville. She got her Master's of Arts and Doctor of Philosophy degrees in clinical child development psychology from the Ohio State University in Columbus, Ohio. Prior to her appointing to her current appointment as acting president, Dr. Jones served as provost and vice president of academic affairs. She's advised and mentored many students as they've moved through Payne College. She's an active member of Christ Presbyterian Church, where she serves as the ruling elder on session and treasurer of the Ellis Harris Presbyterian Women. Dr. Jones is Vice President of Membership for Augusta, the Augusta Chapter of the Lynx Incorporated and Treasurer of the Friends of Augusta Corral. She was initiated into the Zeta Z Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha, Alpha Sorority in 1979. And in 2009, she graduated from Leadership Augusta and has also served on its board of directors. So she is a mover, a shaker, a woman on the move. Thank you so much, Dr. Jones, um, for coming to speak with me a little bit about women in education in Augusta. I hope that you all enjoy. Make sure to let Dr. Jones know if you do. Um, you can always email us here at the museum if you have any ideas or um, really about anything. We always want to hear from you. So thank you all so much for joining us. All right, let's get to it. Greetings and welcome today to the Women's Brown Bag Lecture at the Augusta Museum of History. I would like to begin by thanking Ms. Nancy Glazer, Director of the Museum, and Ms. Harvey White, Education Manager, for the kind invitation to share with you today. I am Cheryl Evans-Jones, the 17th president of Payne College, the only historically black college located in the central Savannah River area. And I am a native of Augusta, Georgia. I am the second female president of Payne College and the second Augustan to lead the college. The college's second president, George Williams Walker, was born in Augusta, although his family moved to South Carolina very early in his life. Today's presentation is organized into three parts. General information related to women in executive higher education positions focusing on the presidency, my journey in academia from college professor to college president, and information about Payne College. Data tell us that women now earn most of all college degrees and are well represented in entry level and mid-level positions in most sections of the economy. Of particular interest for this presentation is a representation of women in higher education. Bischel and McKenzie's, I'm sorry, McKenzie's 2017 research report for the College and University Professional Association for Human Resources indicates that across the United States, approximately half of higher education administrators are women. They found that women are more likely to hold positions such as department head, administrative officer, and assistant dean. Women have not made the same progress 
in attaining executive positions such as the chief executive officer or president. The American College President Study, ACPS, produced by the American Council on Education in partnership with the TIAA Institute is the premier source of demographic data tracking college and university presidents from public, private, and for-profit accredited degree granting institutions. The study is completed approximately every five years. The report sheds light on women in executive higher education leadership roles. Summary findings from the most recent, that is 2017 study, include the following. The percentage of university and college presidents who are women nearly tripled from 9.5% in 1986 to 30.1% in 2016, and that is across all institutions of higher education. Women presidents are more likely to have a doctor of philosophy or a doctor of education degree than their male peers. Education, humanities, and the social sciences were the top three fields of study among all presidents. Women are more likely to lead public institutions, 58%, than private institutions, 41%. Women were at least likely to lead doctorate-granting institutions and more likely to lead special focus institutions, 8%. Women were more likely than men to be first-time college presidents. The path to the presidency is somewhat different for women and men. Women were more likely than men to have served as a chief academic officer, provost, or dean in their immediate prior position. Male presidents are more likely to come from outside higher education or have had a different senior campus executive role than women presidents. 17% of women presidents are women of color. Seven 0.7% were African American. Separate from the ACE study, we can also look at female presidents among member UNCF institutions. During the 2018-2019 academic year, nine of the 37 or 24% member college and university presidents institutions were led by women. Separate from the ACE study, we can also look at female presidents among UNCF member institutions. During 2018 to 2019, nine of the 37 member colleges and universities were led by women, that's 24%. The number increased to 13 of 37 member institutions during the 2020-2021 academic year, that's 35%. In several ways, my journey to the presidency of Payne College fits the data reported in the 2017 ACE study. I have a Doctor of Philosophy degree. It is in the social science. My career path included the Chief Academic Officer position. I am a first time college president. And on a personal note, I am not married, I'm widowed, and I have no children. My journey to my current position began here as I am a native of Augusta, Georgia, and the only child of parents who were both educators in the Richmond County and Columbia County school systems. As such, my parents stressed the importance of education and doing well in school. I am a product of the Richmond County public school system I graduated with honors from Ursula Collins Elementary and Thomas Walter Josie High School. During most of my school years, the public schools were segregated. However, during my junior year at Josie, the faculty became integrated, and during my senior year, busing was implemented, which integrated the school system. Throughout my years, I always had the best teachers I could have hoped for. They, too, encourage their students to embrace excellence and to do well. 
After graduating from Jose High School, I entered Fisk University, a historically black college in Nashville, Uni Tennessee, where I majored in psychology. I was going to follow the secondary education track to be certified to teach in high school and follow all of the curriculum requirements to do so except student teaching. By my senior year, I decided that I did not want to teach and therefore did not need to follow through with student teaching. Imagine that. I received the Bachelor of Arts degree in psychology, summa cum laude, and was inducted into Phi Beta Kappa. From Fisk University, I enrolled at The Ohio State University, where I received the Master of Arts and Doctor of Philosophy degrees in clinical child developmental psychology. After graduate school, I remained in Columbus and worked at Children's Hospital Guidance Center, providing psychological testing and therapy to school-aged children. I returned to my hometown of Augusta when I married the late Dr. George Evans Jones, who lived in Bath, South Carolina. At the time, George, a Payne College alumnus, was teaching psychology at the college. When George decided to stop teaching, I applied for the position and was hired by the late Dr. Julius S. Scott Jr. in 1993 as an assistant professor of psychology. After all, I wanted to work and jobs in the field in which I was trained seemed scarce at the time. It was my plan to work at Payne for the spring semester of 1993 and the following academic year. By that time, I fully expected to have found a job working in the area of clinical child psychology. Neither higher education nor higher education leadership was my goal. However, I found that I enjoyed teaching and I enjoyed being at Payne College. And so I stayed and never looked back to my earlier career. During my 10 years in the classroom at Payne, I taught courses such as Introduction to Psychology, Abnormal Psychology, Developmental Psychology, Behavior Modification, and Stress Management. In 1999, I was promoted to the rank of Associate Professor, and in 2001, I earned tenure status. While in the classroom, I was fortunate to be recognized for my teaching. I was twice recipient of the Evelyn Berry Teacher of the Year Award and also recipient of the Vulcans Material Company Teaching Excellence Award presented by the Vulcans Material Company and the Georgia Foundation for Independent Colleges. Dr. Scott retired in 1994 and Dr. Shirley A.R. Lewis became the 13th and first female president of Payne College during the same year. I think dedication to teaching and hard work caught the eye of my supervisors and mentor. In October 1997, Dr. Lewis appointed me to my first administrative position when she named me Institutional Self-Study Director for the college's upcoming Institutional Self-Study for Reaffirmation of Accreditation. We were in the reaffirmation class of 2001. Three of us, especially Mrs. Allison Sitkins and the late Professor Marva Stewart, worked long and hard to accomplish our task. Because of the long hours that we kept, Dr. Lewis dubbed us the Midnight Crew. After leading a successful team reaffirmation effort in 2001, I began moving through other administrative positions of increasing responsibility, something initiated by Dr. Lewis. In 2004, Dr. Lewis nominated me and another colleague at the time, Dr. Margie Waters, for the United Negro College Fund, or UNCF, Maple Parker McLean Women's Leadership Development Forum. Even though I learned much from my participation, I did not have president on my radar at the time. Other administrative positions that I held were coordinator of the Department of Psychology, interim chair of the Division of Social Sciences, 
Associate Dean of Academic Affairs, Interim Vice President of Academic Affairs, Executive Assistant to the President, which included Title III Coordinator and Director of Planning and Evaluation, Acting Provost and Vice President of Acting Academic Affairs, and Provost and Vice President of Academic Affairs. In July 2019, the Board of Trustees named me as Acting President, and at their meeting in October of 2019, I was named President. As I stated, when I joined Payne College in 1993, I thought I would be at Payne College for just one and a half years. At the time, I had no idea that I would still be here 28 years later and in the position of president. Although I did not seek any of the administrative positions that I have held, I did opt in, meaning that I fully accepted and embraced each one, always trying to do the best that I could to move Payne College, her mission, and her students forward. It is my pleasure to now lead the institution, which means so much to me. It is my honor to work with the most prepared, dedicated, and caring faculty and staff, eager and engaged students, and loyal and committed alumni I could possibly ask for. I would like to share a little about Payne College, an institution that means so much to me and this community, the place where I have spent the last 28 years of my life. Payne College was founded in 1882 by an interracial group of Methodists, one group predominantly white, then known as the Methodist Episcopal Church South, now the United Methodist Church, and the other group predominantly black, then known as the Colored Methodist Episcopal Church, now the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. The college was established to address the educational and spiritual needs of newly freed slaves. In 1883, a charter of incorporation for the Payne Institute was granted. In 1903, sufficient college level work was provided to justify changing the name to Payne College. Since its founding, the college has kept her doors open to all, regardless of race, color, and gender. Payne College is a private institution steeped in the tenets of Methodism that provides a liberal arts education of the highest quality. The college emphasizes academic excellence, ethical and spiritual values, social responsibility, and personal development to prepare spiritually centered men and women for positions of leadership and service. Payne College is accredited by the Transnational Association of Christian Colleges and Schools, known by the acronym TRATS. The college offers the Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science degrees with majors in five departments, which are business, humanities, mathematics, sciences, and technology, media studies, and social sciences. In spite of some challenges in the recent years, we have also experienced many successes as well. Let me share some of them with you. Again, we continue to celebrate our accreditation by the Transnational Association of Christian Colleges and Schools. We were approved for membership in the National Christian College Athletic Association, NCCAA. Consequently, the college will resume its participation in men and women's basketball, softball, baseball, volleyball, and men and women's track and field. The eyes of the world were on Payne College in April during the time of the Masters Tournament. The college formally presented the Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa to Lee Elder, who is an honorary starter for the tournament. Last November, the Augusta National Golf Club announced the funding of the Lee Elder Endowed Scholarship for a female and male golfer at Payne College and the funding of a women's golf team for next academic year. 
The college received a grant from the Bank of America, which allowed us to establish a smart classroom that is now operational. Plans are to add three more smart classrooms across campus as well as podcast studios. Payne College and the Medical College of Georgia at Augusta University are involved in an $11 million Heart Association strategically funded research network that includes other centers at Boston University, the Medical College of Wisconsin, and the University of Pennsylvania. MCG and Payne College will be looking at the link between heart disease and certain cancers and trying to answer why many patients develop both and why the outcomes are worse for Blacks. Payne College ranked among the best Christian colleges in Georgia by EdSmart. The criteria include things such as the average net price of tuition, the rate at which students successfully graduate, overall retention rate, and post-college financial success. The college was awarded a Minority Science Engineering Improvement Grant. The main purpose of this project is to increase the number of students, especially women, who graduate from Payne College with a bachelor's degree in a STEM field, such as biology, mathematics, or chemistry. Payne College is a member of the Science Consortium of Minority Schools, established to create an achievement coalition for STEM success. The technical support and services provided by the consortium will enhance the curriculum and the programs offered at Lane College, Lamorne Oren College, Payne College, and Tennessee State University. The goal of the consortium is to increase the number of African-American students, especially women, who enroll, graduate, and select careers in the sciences and engineering fields. The consortium is led by Meharry Medical College in partnership with Fisk University. The college was awarded a three-year competitive grant from the Department of Justice. The first year is a planning year. The grant will allow the creation of an education prevention and bystander intervention program and coordinated victim services to address issues related to domestic violence, sexual assault, and stalking. We are grateful for our successes and we are continuously working to restore the roar at Payne College. Thank you again for allowing me this opportunity to share with you.